Today's video is a beginner's guide to Arduino. I have been planning to make this for quite some time now. It's meant for people that heard about microcontrollers and Arduino in particular, got interested but don't know where to start. In this video we will be working with the most popular Arduino board, Arduino Uno. We'll go through how to connect Arduino microcontroller, install programming environment on a PC and write the most basic code. I will also look at other types of Arduino microcontrollers. So basically the guide I wish existed when I was getting into Arduino. Let's give it a go. So what is microcontroller? I always like to think of it as a black box that accepts input signals from the outside world. It is provided with a code that reads that input, processes it and then communicates with the outside world by sending output. So when this concept is clear, we can now replace the black box with Arduino Uno and look at the sample interaction of the boards with the outside world. We'll get our input from the push button, create the code that will react to that input and send the output to an LED to turn it on and off. Before we do it, let's look at Arduino Uno board and see what it consists of. I will not describe every single component of the board, just will go through the most important ones. Here is the hardened brain of the Arduino board, the ATmega328 chip. We also have onboard LED linked to digital pin 13, which is not the most important component as such, but is going to be used in the course of this video. Let's start with different ways of connecting Arduino to power and to PC to load the code. First we have USB socket that we can connect Arduino to the PC with. This will power the Arduino but also allow us to load the code. Then we have a DC power socket with which we can connect DC external power. It can be anything from 7 to 12 volts. It is voltage regulated down to 5 volts. Connecting higher voltage can fry the board. Then we have a VIN pin to which we also can connect external power supply. To do it we connect positive of the power supply to VIN pin and negative to any of the ground pins. We can also power the Arduino by connecting 5 volt power supply to the 5 volt pin but caution, no regulator here. So if you connect higher voltage you can kiss your Arduino board goodbye. And for that reason, 5 volt pin should really be used to power other devices like LEDs, sensors, etc. Same with 3.3 volt pin, it should be used for powering the devices that require voltage lower than 5 volts. Next we have two ground pins. Then we have reset button, which restarts code loaded to Arduino board from scratch. All global variables and dynamic memory is reset. Arduino has six analog pins but only four can be used for I.O. activities. Analog pins A4 and A5 are reserved for I2C interface, which will not be discussed in this video. Apart from the analog pins, we also have 13 digital pins. Here also only 11 pins can be used for I.O. Six of those pins are special pins, so-called PWN pins, PWM standing for pulse width modulation. I will explain this more later in the course of this video. Digital pin 0 and digital pin 1 are reserved for serial communication. We are not going to cover this today. Ok, so that was Arduino Uno. But this is not the only Arduino board out there. The next one I use quite often is Arduino Nano. It is of different shape and size, but if we look closer we would find all the same components and pins there. This time we have USB mini interface to our computer. No DC plug. VIN 5 volts, 3.3 volts and ground pins are all there. Reset button as well. Funny enough being a smaller board it has two extra analog pins A6 and A7. Same number of digital pins with the same pins designated to be PWM ones. What's next? Quite popular is Arduino Micro. Uh, similar in size to Arduino. Then comes Arduino Lilypad. This one is a strange one as it is meant to put Arduino projects on your clothing. Different components are connected with using metal threads. And finally the last Arduino board presented in this video is Arduino Mega. You would use this board if you require much more analog or digital pins. For small project a microcontroller like this also can be used but would be an overkill. How much do you need to pay to start your adventure with Arduino? 
The genuine Arduino is a bit pricey. On Amazon you get Arduino Uno in a nice box for $21. But for making project as a hobby, I would recommend to save your money and look for so-called clone Arduino boards. On AliExpress you can get one for around $5. If you want to spend even less, you can go for Arduino Nano. It ranges from 13 US dollars on Amazon to as little as three and a half dollars on AliExpress. It gives you the same functionality as Uno in the compact body and even provides two more analog pins. Funny enough, I could not find the Arduino Micro on AliExpress, so here is just the price tag from Amazon. This board in turn provides one more PWN pin. Otherwise, it is very similar to Uno and Nano. Lilypad is anything from 15 to 5 US dollars. Apart from the weird shape, it provides the same number of pins and the same functionality as Arduino Uno. And finally, the most expensive is Arduino Mega, ranging from 31 to 10 US dollars. But this board provides loads of pins, also has more memory, so the higher price stack is fully justifiable. Now let's look at Arduino I.O. pin types and the way you can address them from Arduino code to be used as either input or output. We will start with digital pins. We have 13 of them, but as I mentioned before, two of them are used for serial communication, so that leaves us with just 11. They can be used as either input or output. They use binary logic, so when reading from or writing values to those pins, we can either write 1, which is a high signal and corresponds to 5 volts at the digital pin, or 0, which is a low signal and corresponds to 0 volts. To use any digital pin as an output, we have to declare it as output pin using pin mode command. And then, with digital write, you can send either high signal, which would output 5 volts at that pin, or low signal, which would output 0 volts. To use a digital pin as an input, you use pin mode command to set this pin as an input, and then using digital read, we can read signal at the pin, which can be either high, that corresponds to 5 volts, or low, that means 0 volts. Now, let's look at the analog pins. In Arduino Uno we have six of them, but only four are used for I.O. activities. Please note that analog pins can be used as digital pins, so in a way we just described for both digital input and output. But they can also be used for analog input. What it means is that we can input through those pins any input voltage ranging from 0 to 5 volts. We can do it by using analog read command. For analog read, you do not need to use pin mode command, to set the pins as an input. Analog read function assumes analog pins being input ones. Then, that input voltage ranging from 0 to 5 volts is then mapped into integer value between 0 and 1023. So for instance, for 0 volts, analog read function would return integer value of 0. For 1 volt, value of 204. For 2.5 volts, 511 and for 5 volts the value of 1023. When breaking down all the components of Arduino Uno, we mentioned that there is a subset of digital pins called PWM pins. They are marked with tilde sign on the board. When those pins are used as output, instead of working with just high and low signals, they can simulate voltages in between 0 and 5. This is done using analog write command. The value passed to that function can range between 0, representing 0 volts, and 255, representing 5 volts. The way this works is to create a square wave, a signal switch between on and off. This on-off pattern can simulate voltages in between the full VCC, so 5 volts, and off, 0 volts. By changing the portion of the time the signal spends on, versus the time that the signal spends off. The duration of on time is called the pulse width. Thus we call those pins PWM pins. Now that we know more about Arduino, we may try to write our first program to blink the built-in LED, which is linked to digital pin 13. The program will be created on a PC and then loaded to Arduino board through USB cable. We cannot yet start though, as we have one major component missing. Programming environment called Arduino IDE needs to be installed on the PC. You can Google it and find the link to Arduino page where you can download it for Windows, Linux or Mac. After the download you can start the install. It is very easy. 
you just press next button all the way and the process takes no more than a minute. The last thing before we start is to make sure that in Arduino IDE we specify which type of Arduino board we are planning to work with and which USB port it is connected to. By default we have Arduino Uno selected. If we check different type of boards that we can select, you would see that there is a lot of them and, and among them we can find Arduino Nano, Mega, Micro and Lilypad. Let's choose an Arduino Nano. For this particular board, you have an option to select a processor. Uh, for the old types of Arduino Nano boards, you have to select AT Mega 328 with an old bootloader, which I normally use. Otherwise, this is not going to work. So, whichever Arduino board you are using, you need to double check whether that option is available here as well. Let's choose back Arduino Uno. We can see that the port is disabled. This is because our microcontroller is not connected. If I do connect it, you'd hear a distinct sound. And if you go back to the options, you'd see that the board is successfully connected to COM3. Now let's look at the program window. At the top, you would see two buttons. One is to compile the code and the other one would compile the code and also upon successful compilation would load it to the board. Then you have a status bar that shows the current state of the compilation or code to transfer and underneath you have the status window that would display any error messages, connection errors, syntax errors, information about memory consumption, etc. In this window now you can see the empty sketch, but we still can compile it. Obviously compilation finished with no errors. When we press the load button we would see that before the code is sent to the board it is compiled again. The sketch is successfully transferred to the board and now Arduino is doing sweet nothing, as instructed. Even with empty sketch, we can distinguish three main sections of each program. Declaration section, which here is empty, but normally you would declare any variable, constants or functions you are planning to use in your code. Then we have a setup section. This code is executed once when we power on Arduino board or when we press a reset button. Here we can identify pins as input or output. If you are working with displays, you can set display brightness, etc. You can also open serial monitor. And finally, you have a main loop section. The code here runs in an endless loop. When I compared microcontrollers to a black box awaiting input signals from the outside world, this is it. The code here is run repeatedly and performs the actions when the defined input appears at Arduino pins and reacts to it by sending out programmed output. So let's write the code to blink our onboard LED. First, we would declare onboard LED variable that will correspond to the Arduino pin connected to that LED. In setup, we use pin mode command to set digital pin 13 as an output pin. And then in main loop, we send high signal to digital pin 13, turning the LED on, wait for a sec, and then send low signal to it, turning the LED off, and waiting for another second. The sequence of these actions would be run in an endless loop, so the LED would start blinking. Let's compile the code. We get an error. I on purpose missed required semicolon at the end of one line. You can see the error information in both status bar and status window. After correcting the mistake, we can compile again and send it to the Arduino board. Here we have Arduino Uno with a blank sketch loaded. After connecting it to the PC via USB cable, the board is powered up. We are loading the code for blinking onboard LED. You can see a couple of LEDs blinking, which indicates that the transfer of code is in progress. When the code is loaded, we can observe the onboard LED starts blinking in the defined interval. After we disconnect Arduino, all LEDs go out. Then we power Arduino with the 9 volt DC cable. The microcontroller is no longer connected to the PC and yet we see that the onboard LED is still blinking as programmed. This is the end of part 1 of this tutorial. Hope you would find it useful. 
and it will help you get started with Arduino. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. I am trying hard to make my videos better and better. Just today I upgraded my mic, so hopefully the sound of my videos will be of better quality. Actually, the wrap-up of this video is filmed with that new mic. Did you spot the difference? I'll be posting the second part of this tutorial in a week or so. So see you then.